Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewing on the Tine. And I'm here today with another one of my top five videos. So it's a top five selection of some sort of category that I've chosen. I've done a few of these which I've put in a playlist if you'd like to see more of them. But today's video is going to be my top five patterns that I own but haven't sewn yet. So whatever reason that might be, I'm going to talk through why haven't I sewn these patterns when I clearly wanted them so much when they were released and I bought them and I was so excited to make them and I still haven't made them yet. So yeah, today is going to be all about my top five unsewn sewing patterns. Before we get started, I'm wearing a ready to wear top from Topshop. It's just this lovely black and white striped jersey top. It's actually got um, two hearts on the chest, which I may be able to show you. <laughs> One says we oui, and one says no, which is just quite cute. So yeah, that's my top that I'm wearing. I'm wearing this gorgeous silk head scarf in my hair, which is from Adornments by Rasheen, who I will link down below, but makes and sells the most beautiful head scarves, headbands, absolutely amazing. I highly recommend you go and check her out. Right, so let's get started. My pattern that's going to come in at number five is the Sew Over It Betty dress. I bought this at least a year ago, probably even more, and I've never made it. It's not been opened. I see beautiful Betty dresses on Instagram, on YouTube, and I love them, but I just don't know if it's for me. I don't know if it's my style. Not that I feel like I have a specific style. I feel like I'm quite eclectic and changeable in the things that I wear but I just haven't been convinced to make this yet. Let me know do you think I should make it or do you think it's one that I should maybe pass on to somebody else? Please let me know because I just don't know. I haven't quite given up yet, I haven't been able to part with it just yet but I'm just not 100% sure whether this would actually suit me. So that's number five. So sophisticated with my glass of wine on a Saturday evening. <laughs> Obviously it's none other than the Brancourt Estate, New Zealand, Marlborough, Sauvignon Blanc, <laughs> of course. So pattern number four is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Sorrel Dress. Now I actually took part in the Kickstarter campaign that Jennifer ran to release her patterns as paper patterns because previously they'd only been PDFs and I supported her Kickstarter campaign for that and contributed and she's now released them as paper patterns and this was one of the rewards that I contributed towards and it's gorgeous I really really love it I love the collar detail I love the darted waistband and it's not a waistband sorry but it's where the bodice meets the skirt the darts match up and it just looks really cute and gorgeous now, I don't really have a specific reason why I haven't made this one yet. Maybe I haven't got round to it, but I may have the chance to make it soon. I'm taking part in an online sewing challenge, very sort of casual challenge called Swap Share Sew. And it's one of the patterns that I've sent a photo of to my swap partner. So the concept is that you send three photos of patterns that you own but haven't made yet and then your swap partner decides which one you make and this is one of the patterns that I've sent her. So it may be that I'm pushed into making this one very soon. <laughs> I've just realised that every time I hold up a pattern it's making the light balance change so I'm really sorry if that's annoying. <laughs> right, pattern number three that I own but haven't made is the True Bias Nico dress and top. I love this. I love the way it's styled on the pattern envelope. Again, it hasn't even been opened, but you can make it in a sleeveless or a full length version. You can make it as a top or you can make it as a dress. It's for jersey fabrics and I just really, really love it. But I'm gonna be completely honest with the reason why I haven't made this yet. It's a body confidence thing. Because if you see the style of this dress, it's obviously very close fitting on the stomach area. And like a lot of people, my stomach area is an area that maybe I don't like to draw attention to so often. And I'm really concerned that that is just 
going to show off every lump and bump of my body. I don't know, has anyone made this and could tell me, does it work for someone who's got maybe curves and is not so slim as the person on the pattern envelope? I mean, I could just have a look on Instagram and see who else has made it and, and you know, look for other body types in it. I haven't done that yet. Maybe that should be my next step. But genuinely, that is the reason I haven't made it yet. I'm just worried that it's not, I don't want to say flattering, but I'm just worried that it's not going to suit me with the shape and the style and the close fittingness of it. But let me know what you think, because I do still love it. I've had this since Christmas last year. Somebody bought me it, always my birthday. And yeah, I've had it a long time and I really would like to make it or accept that it's just not for me. Right, and we're down to pattern number two, on my list. Now I've just realised I haven't told you how I've ordered these, how I've chosen from five to one. I think I've ordered them in the sense of one being the pattern that I was the most excited about when I got and probably the one that I still want to make the most. So I'm kind of hovering between the, my top two. I can't decide which one to show as my second one but I think I'm going to show this one. And it is the Closet Case Patterns Morgan Jeans. Now these are a boyfriend jean. They're designed to be made out of non-stretch denim, basically. And I really, really love the style of these. Purely the reason I haven't made these yet is probably the jean fear that a lot of people have. They're quite a big project and thinking about the fit and everything is a little off-putting. I did spot some fabric when I was in John Lewis this week that I would really have liked to use to make these but I was trying to search on my phone for how much I would need to buy and it just wasn't working so I just gave up in the end. I could always go back if I wanted but what I'm thinking of doing is actually making these when I go to the Sarah Diane Creative Sewing Retreat in October because she is a bit of a, a bit of a, a an extremely fantastic fit person. I'm not really explaining that very well. She teaches jeans making workshops. She knows her stuff. So I thought if I maybe take these along then I could get some advice from Sarah and come away with hopefully a pair of awesome Morgan jeans. So I do very much intend on making these still. I just haven't got around to it and I think that is a little bit of the jean fear. A little bit of the nerves around it being a big project and if it goes wrong I've probably spent quite a bit of money on fabric, so yeah, but hopefully that one will happen very soon. Oh, Chester's just come in, but I can't show you him because he's down on the floor. He's just having a little clean. <laughs> he's just having a little lick of his paws. Right, so let's show you my last pattern of my top five patterns that I own but haven't made yet. And it is my number one, the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress. Now I absolutely adored this when it was released. I just loved it. I had to have it. I loved the style of it. I love deer and doe patterns anyway, but I think I just loved the, the photos that were released of the, you know, the pattern testers and the, the models and things like that. I absolutely loved it. I don't know what's putting me off making it. I think partly because so many other people also loved it and I was seeing a lot of them pop up but also I don't really have occasions to wear such an amazing <laughs> dress as this. I feel like it's quite a dressy dress and needs an occasion to wear it and I'm not sure that I've got any occasions coming up anytime soon that would suit such an impressive dress. This one possibly might be a bit more wearable not for day to day, but for more an evening meal out or the theatre or something like that. So possibly I'll go for this one as I really think I should make it because I was so excited about it and I've seen so many beautiful versions, but I just don't think I'd get enough wear out of this version. And it looks like it takes quite a lot of fabric, let's see, four metres, four metres of fabric to make that version. I would want to make it in a quality fabric that's going to feel nice against my skin that I'm going to be really pleased with and therefore is it only going to be worn once and then sit in my wardrobe? I don't know. Or hang in my wardrobe. I don't know. 
maybe I'm thinking too much into it and I should just go for it and make it but I do absolutely love the pattern still I really do yeah I wish I had an occasion to make it for and to wear it so there we have it those are my top five patterns that I own but haven't sewn yet please let me know down below any of your thoughts on those patterns especially the Nico I would like your advice on that one and the Betty actually any of them <laughs> and if you've made any of them and you want to convince me to make them or convince me not to make them because that could also be a thing then please do let me know thank you so much for watching thank you for all your support and your comments if you haven't already please do subscribe i am creeping towards 4000 so that would be amazing if i could hit 4000 subscribers I'd like to see it before my birthday, but my birthday is in December, so I mean, I would hope that I would get there before then. But yeah, I would love to have more of you here with me on this channel. I hope you are all well. I hope you're having a lovely day, whatever you are up to. I will see you again next time. Happy sewing. Bye. It is warm today.